Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a modern balloon sleeve sweater. Super comfy and super clean was the model for this restrained design. We kept it at three stitches for the whole piece, and as always, it's customizable if you want it longer or shorter. Speaking of, if you're looking to make something all your own, you're in the right place. We've got hundreds of modern crochet designs that can be adjusted to your taste, with more designs coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe, and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support, so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 600 grams of yarn, and that's 1300 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below, use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's padding giveaway by telling us your favorite bird. For me, I have been obsessing over cute little parakeet videos, so I'd have to say parakeets. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. and half double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we are first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we are all going to grab our 5mm hook and start by making a chain that starts about 1 inch underneath our underarm to we're about 1 inch underneath our underbust. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 7 inches or 19 centimeters, or that's going to be a chain of 30. And now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing our first row, which is going to be a half double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 2. That chain 2 does not count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. We're going to yarn over and then insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook. Insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, pull through. Once we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. There's our first half double crochet, let's do one more. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Continue to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. We've just put one half double crochet into every chain, and into that last one, we're going to be doing an increase of three. So, three half double crochets into that last chain. So, starting with a yarn over, insert your hook into that last chain with one half double crochet. Insert your hook into that same last chain with a second half double crochet, and then into that same last chain for a total of three half double crochets. And now that we have that, our following row is going to be back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So just chain one and flip your work. From here, we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row and insert our hook into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that following stitches back loop, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. A quick tip that I have for you is once when we're finishing every slip stitch, make sure that we're not accidentally tugging too tightly on our working yarn, otherwise the following row is going to be too tight to work into. I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Right after our back loop slip stitch row, we're going to be switching back to our half double crochet row, but now they're going to be within the back loops so that we can get some really pretty ribbing. So starting every half double crochet row, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Now doing a back loop half double crochet is going to be the same way that we have done our first half double crochet. So starting with the yarn over, 
we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous rows back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us and then half double crochet per usual. Let's do this again. Yarn over into that following stitches back loop, insert your hook and half double crochet and continue to do this until we have just one stitch left. Now that we've put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, we should have left the last one. And now we're going to do another increase of three back loop half double crochets. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitches back loop with our first half double crochet into that same back loop with our second half double crochet and then into that same back loop for a third half double crochet. And from here, another back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So just as a refresher, chain one, flip your work, find the last stitch from our previous row and insert your hook in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us, yarn over and lightly pull through everything, making sure that we're not tugging too tight. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat these two previous rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on an increase of three back loop half double crochets, and then a back loop slip stitch row with absolutely no increases and no decreases. We're going to continue this until this can stretch, making sure that we are stretching it as if we are wearing it, from mid underarm over to the middle of our chest, making sure that we end right after a back loop half double crochet row. I'll meet you guys back once when I have mine all finished up. So I am back with the increased side of my front panel. I have a total of 19 rows and my width is just about four inches or 10 centimeters and that is unstretched. Since we should be at the middle of our chest, we're going to have one middle row, which is just going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So basically the same thing that we've been doing. So all we're gonna do from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop half double crochet row, we're going to chain one, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. The only difference is that we're going to be putting a stitch marker into this row just so we know where the middle is. So since I have a few back loop slip stitches already finished, all I'm going to do is grab a stitch marker and then place it into any one of these stitches. It doesn't quite matter which one, we just want to know where the middle row is. And continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Once we reach the end of the row, we're going to be doing the other side of our front panel, which is going to be the same way that we did the other side, but instead of an increase of three, we're going to be doing a decrease of three. So at the end of this middle back loop slip stitch row, chain two, flip our work, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three so that we can decrease together. So we finished up our middle slip stitch row, made our way back up with our back loop half double crochets and left one, two, three stitches, and now we're gonna do a decrease of three back loop half double crochets together. So to start that, we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop, and then pull through. Now all together, we should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. Once we have all five, all we're gonna do is yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. And that is how we do our decrease of three back loop half double crochets. And from here, we're gonna do our back loop slip stitch row. So just chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch without any increases or decreases. And from here, we're just going to continue to repeat these two rows. So a back loop half double crochet row that ends on a decrease of three back loop half double crochets, and then a back loop slip stitch row with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the increase side of our front panel, making sure that we are not including that middle row. But once we have the same amount of rows all finished up, I will meet you guys back so that we can single crochet along the top. All right, so I am back and the entirety of my front panel is all finished. I have a total of 39 rows, and my width is just about eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters, and that's still unstretched. Now from here, we're going to need to single crochet across the top of our piece. So what we're gonna be doing is put two single crochets into every side half double, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. 
And we're going to continue to do that until we reach this corner over here. The only difference is that once we do this middle single crochet that works into our middle row, we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into there just so we know where it's at. So let's get the first few single crochets done. So our first side row that we should have should be the side half double crochet row. So what we're going to do is just chain one, and then we're going to find that side loop and insert your hook into there with two single crochets. So we're going to pull through, yarn over, pull through two. There's my first single crochet, and we're going to be doing one more into that same side loop. So insert your hook into there, pull through, pull through two. Now all together we should have one, two single crochets into this first side row. Now our next side row should be our side slip stitch row, so I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. So insert with one single crochet, and then that's it. Let's do the next set. So find our following side half double crochet row, find that top loop, and then we're going to insert our hook into there with a single crochet, and then one more single crochet into that same top loop within our side half double crochet row. And then find our side slip stitch row, find that top loop, insert your hook into there with just one. And that's it. That's all we're going to do, making our way all the way up and around to this next corner. But remember, when we do our single crochet into our middle side slip stitch row, just insert your stitch marker into that top stitch so we know where the middle is. Once we reach this corner, do a chain up of one and cut. And then we're actually going to repeat the same thing that we just did to make another panel. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up my single crochet row along the top, making sure that I inserted my stitch marker into that middle stitch. I did a chain up one and cut and then repeated everything I just did here on the other side. And now that we have both of our panels all finished up, we're ready to seam everything together. So first things first, we're going to place our two panels together, making sure that the ribbing that we have is faced outwards. Next, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So getting this first one started, we're gonna find that first available stitch within the front panel and insert our hook only in through that front loop. Next, we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert our hook only in through that back loop. And then once we have all three of those loops, we're just gonna yarn over and pull through all three. We're doing this just so that it looks like another slip stitch row. Let's do this again. Find that next stitch into the front panel and insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. And then that's it. We're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way up. And then once we reach the corner of our panels, we're going to do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that our sides are all seamed up, the next thing we're going to start working on is our strap. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning the ribbing that we have is all along the outside. And then next we're gonna be inserting our hook into the top stitch that we have right at the peak. And then we're going to single crochet down the width that we want our strap to be, making sure that it's in multiples of three. Now I'd like for my strap to be just about two inches or five centimeters. So working my way down, I'm gonna do a total of nine single crochets. That's what this stitch marker is. So start by inserting your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. That doesn't count as a stitch and all we're gonna do is insert our first single crochet into that same top stitch and then put one single crochet into every stitch for the width that we'd like our strap to be. So just starting with this top corner stitch right over here, I'm going to insert my hook with my first single crochet and then continue until I have a total of nine single crochets. And now that I have my nine single crochets, for the rest of the strap, they're all going to be back loop slip stitches. So at the end of our row, all we're gonna do is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And to do our first back loop slip stitch, we're gonna find the last stitch from our previous row and insert our hook in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do this again. 
into that following stitch, insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, into that following stitch, insert and pull through everything. And from here, we're just going to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row is gonna to be too difficult to work into. But once we reach the end of the row, we're just going to chain one, flip our work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And we're gonna continue with our back loop slip stitch row until we have an even number of rows that can reach up and over our shoulder and reach the back panel. I'll meet you guys back once we have that all finished up. I'm back and I have just finished up my strap. I have a total of 36 rows and this is roughly nine inches or 22 centimeters. And now we're going to seam it to the back. So first things first, make sure that our work is still flipped right side out. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel. And once when our hook is in through both of those loops, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything. And now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So the same seam that we did for the sides. So let's all start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert our hook into that front loop. Next, we're gonna find that next available stitch into the back panel or the body portion and insert your hook in through that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do this just once more. Into the next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, yarn over and pull through everything. And we're gonna to continue to do this until we don't have any more strap stitches left to work into. Do a chain up a one and cut and then we're going to do pretty much the same thing on the other side, but I'm gonna talk you guys through it. So now that my first strap is all seamed up, we're gonna get started on the second strap. It has the same idea as the first strap, but we're gonna be inserting our hook into a different stitch just so that all of our seams can be along the back half. So what we're first gonna do is insert our hook into the same amount of stitches along the other side as single crochets that we made for this side of our strap. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a total of nine single crochets. So making sure that we are including that top middle stitch, even though the single crochet from our other strap is in there, we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine for me. And then I'm gonna insert my hook into that stitch. And then from there, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch until we reach this top corner stitch. And then we're going to do the same amount of back loop slip stitch rows. And once when we do, we're going to seam it to the back. The only difference is that we're going to end along the outside, not along the top. So just like how we inserted our hook into on this side, we're gonna count out a total of the same amount of stitches that we just inserted our hook into, and then we're going to seam working our way up towards the point. And once we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we'll be all done with the strap, and then we can get started on the sleeves. So I am back. Both of my straps are all finished up, and now we're going to need to single crochet along the bottom end of our strap so we can get started on our sleeve. So in order to do our prep, we're first gonna make sure that our work is slipped right side out, meaning all the ribbing that we have is still flipped along the outside. Now, next thing we're gonna do is find that next available stitch into the front panel, and then insert our hook into there. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then we're gonna be working along the bottom side of our strap, just putting one single crochet into every side row, so let's get this started. Now this is my first side row right here, which is this raised row. So all I'm gonna do is insert my hook into that top loop. And then if you guys have some tail ends like me, go ahead and just place that over that stitch that you inserted your hook into just so we can single crochet around it so that we don't have to weave it in later. Let's do the next one. This is my next side row right here. It's this divot, so I'm gonna find that top loop insert my hook and continue to place my tail ends over that stitch and then single crochet. And all we're gonna do is continue to put one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way to our back panel. And then once we do, we're just going to slip stitch into that following available stitch that we have into that single crochet row, slip stitch into there, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back because we need to be inserting our stitch marker into that first, and into that last stitch. So I've just finished up my single crochet row along the bottom half of my strap. Now we do need to insert our stitch marker into the first and then into the 
last stitch that we have we do want to make sure that we're not inserting it into that slip stitch stitch because that's just to connect it into the base so just as a really quick tip from stitch marker to stitch marker we should have the same exact amount of rows as slip stitch rows that we had so as an example I had a total of 36 back loop slip stitch rows so from my stitch marker all the way over to this stitch marker right here I have 36 stitches including those stitch marker stitches but once we have all of that out of the way, we can get started on the sleeve length. So make sure that our work is flipped right side out again. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into the last stitch that we have for our side seam. And then we're going to make a chain the length that we would like for our sleeve to be, keeping in mind that we will have a cuff. So I would like for my sleeve to be just about 17 inches or 43 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 70. So now that I have my chain, I'm going to be doing a half double crochet row all the way back down, leaving the last chain. So all we're going to do at this point is block off that last chain, do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. So just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three and continue to put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one so that we can increase together. And now that we put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one, we're just gonna do an increase of two into that last chain. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook into that last chain with our first half double crochet, and then into that same last chain with a second half double crochet. And now we've just finished up our increase, so now we're going to be working up the slant, slip stitching it to connect it into the base. So we're going to find that first available stitch that we have, and then we're just going to slip stitch it into there to connect our row one. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. And now row one is all complete. So getting started on row two, we're just going to find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then flip our work. And getting started on our row two or any even number row, we're always going to start with an increase of two back loop half double crochets because we're at the stitch nearest to the base. So what we're going to do is yarn over, find the last stitch from our previous row, and start with an increase. So one back loop half double, and then into that same back loop, a second half double crochet. And that's that. From here, continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And then at the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, and continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, working back down towards the base, leaving that last stitch so that we can increase together and connect it into the base once more. So we are nearly finished with our row three. We left the last stitch so that we can do an increase into there and then connect it into the base together. So let's get that started. Starting with the yarn over, we're gonna find that last stitch and insert our hook into that back loop. Yarn over, pull through, pull through all three for our first half double. And then one more back loop half double into that same stitch. And now that we have two half double crochets into that stitch, we're just going to connect it into the base. So we're gonna start by finding that next available stitch and then just slip stitch into there to close off this row. And then to work our way up to the following row, just slip stitch into that next stitch and flip our work. And then from there, we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows, making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker stitch, making sure that the last row is worked into the stitch right before that stitch. So I am back and I had just made my way all the way up to my stitch marker stitch, making sure that the last row that I did was worked into the stitch right before that stitch marker stitch. And now from here, we're going to be working across our strap so it's going to be done basically the same way that we did this portion, but without the increases. So since I ended along the outer end, I'm going to chain two, flip my work, and then just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and I will meet you guys back at the base just to remind you how we're going to be connecting it. If you guys ended along the base right here, all you're going to do is slip stitch into that stitch marker stitch, and then work your way all the way back out with our back loop half double crochet row. But nevertheless, I will meet you guys back at the base just to remind you how we're going to connect it. All right, so I've made my way all the way down, putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And now the next available stitch that I have into my base is this stitch marker stitch. 
So all I'm going to do is take my stitch marker out because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to slip stitch it into there just to close off this first row. And then we're going to be slip stitching into the following stitch just to work our way up to the next row. So insert your hook into that following stitch, flip our work, and then just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And for this portion, we're going to continue to put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we have worked our way all the way over to this side, making sure that the last row is worked into that stitch marker stitch. And then I'll meet you guys back just so we can work our way back down for our sleeve. I have just finished up doing my back loop half double crochet rows all the way around our strap. And now we're going to have to work on the other side of our body portion. And it's going to be done exactly the same way that we did the first portion, but instead of an increase of two, we're going to be doing a decrease of two into the two stitches nearest to the base. So since I ended along the outer end, what I'm going to do is chain two, flip my work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the two stitches right before our base. So I am back and I have one, two stitches left. Now we're going to be doing a decrease of two. So starting with the yarn over, we are going to insert our hook into that second to last back loop and pull through. And then from there, we're also going to be inserting our hook into that last stitches back loop, pull through. And once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all four, and that is our decrease. And then from here, we're going to be slip stitching into that next available stitch that we have into the base, which now we should be working into the body. So we're now going to slip stitch into there to close off this row. And then just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the body, the same way that we've been doing. Flip our work, start with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. And then from there, we're just going to continue to repeat these two rows. So making sure that we're doing a decrease of two into the two stitches nearest to the base until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our sleeve together. I am back and I have just finished up the entirety of my sleeve. We don't have any more stitches left to work into into the body. So now we're going to seam it all together. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out, meaning all of the ribbing that we have for the body is now along the inside. And then we're going to do a single crochet seam. So to get started on our seam, we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over pull through everything. And from here, it's just going to be a single crochet seam. So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, next available stitch into the back, and then single crochet. Let's do this just once more. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back, insert, and single. And then that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to start working on is our cuff. So since our sleeve is so big, we're actually going to need to cinch it with this single crochet row. So first things first, make sure that our work is slipped right side out. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. From here, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do is a decrease of two into every side row. So let's get that started. Let's start by finding that first side row. This is mine right here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm also going to insert my hook into that following top loop within our next side row. Insert your hook into there, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That's our decrease of two single crochets. Let's do this again into the following two side rows. Now this is my next side row, so just find that top loop and insert your hook into there, yarn over, pull through, and then into that following side row, find that top loop, yarn over, and pull through. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through all three, and then that's it. We're going to continue to do that, making our way all the way around. And when we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. So now that my single crochet row is all finished up, the next thing we're going to do is make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. Now I would like for my cuff to be just about two inches or five centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of ten. And now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a slip stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, 
we're going to insert with a slip stitch and continue to put one slip stitch into every chain remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch otherwise the following rows are going to be too tight to work into and now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain we now need to connect it into the base so first things first we're going to find that next available stitch into the base and insert your hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this first row and then to work our way up to the following row we're going to need to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base flip our work and now we're just going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch so we're going to be connecting it into the base the same way that we did for the sleeves and now we're just going to be doing rows of back loop slip stitches with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then i will meet you guys back so we can seam our cuff together now that we've made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows we're now going to do a back loop slip stitch seam just to seam everything together and this is going to be the same seam that we did for the sides and for the straps so i'm just going to do the first one with you guys so first things first make sure that our work is flipped right side out next we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel we're going to yarn over pull through everything to secure them together do a chain one and just to do the first one we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert our hook only in through that front loop and then we're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel only insert your hook into that back loop and when we have those three loops on our hook yarn over and pull through all three and then that's it we're just going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into when we don't do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side all right so now that both of our sleeves are all finished up the last thing we're gonna have to do is our bottom band so first things first make sure that our work is slipped right side out and we're going to start with a single crochet row so start by inserting your hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom and then what we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side half double and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row so let's get that started insert your yarn onto your hook pull through do a chain up of one to secure and just do the first few stitches together we're going to find our first side row mine is a side half double crochet row so i'm going to be inserting my hook into that top loop with two single crochets so there is one single crochet and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet next into the side slip stitch row we're going to find this top loop insert your hook into there with just one and then that's it continue to do this making our way all the way around slip stitch into that chain space and then i'll meet you guys back so now that our single crochet row along the bottom is all finished up we're just going to repeat pretty much everything that we did for the cuff so right after we slip stitch into that chain space we're going to make a chain the length that we want the bottom band to be and I would like for mine to be about two inches or five centimeters again. So I'm gonna make another chain of 10. And then from there, just do back loop slip stitch rows, making my way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you guys back just to remind you how we're going to seam it together just the one more time. And then that's it. All right, so I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now we're just going to seam everything together. This is gonna be the same seam as our cuff and our sides so let's get the first one started first things first let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out next we're going to be inserting our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop and then into that next available stitch into the back panel insert into that back yarn over pull through everything and that's it we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then do a chain up of one and cut so our bottom band is all seamed up and we are all done. The last thing we're gonna do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one, bye.